Right, okay, so a little video here on how to prove the quadratic formula. Now, just a little bit of a disclaimer here, obviously, you're not going to be asked to do this in a GCSE question, but I just thought, obviously, as maybe you know, those of you sitting in the higher paper will be using the quadratic formula. It's quite nice just to be able to see where it's come from and how that proof actually comes along. Now, none of the mathematics behind it is out of GCSE range, okay, so there's nothing in here that you shouldn't be learning, obviously, in terms of your actual GCSE, but you're not going to be asked to prove this in a GCSE question. But I do think it's very nice obviously when you be given a formula just to make sure that you actually know where it's come from and how it's created otherwise it's just just a formula that you just told oh look here it is it works just trust me this is why okay and I just quite like to be able to actually see well why does it work where does it come from how do we actually create it and what mathematics goes behind that okay and it's not actually too complicated so I'm just going to go about showing you now all of it really comes down to is completing the square okay so those of you that have, uh, you know have been doing completing the square you'll recognize a lot of the methods here and I will link the videos down below for any of the topics that come up throughout this but the first one and the key one here is going to be completing the square and obviously any quadratic that we look at comes in this format here ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero now obviously we don't know what those um, numbers are when we've just got a blank one here um, but we're just going to have a look at manipulating this and turning it into the quadratic formula now hopefully you already know what the quadratic formula looks like um, I'll write it over here just in case it's mine it's x equals minus b plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac and that's all over 2a. Now obviously you can already see a link between the equation that I have on the left and the one on the over the right there because we've got a's, b's and c's in there and we're just going to have a look at how we actually go about getting there. Now the first step towards doing this is we need to make x as the subject basically. We've only got one x on the right over there. And over the left here we've got an x squared and an x. Now completing the square is going to allow us basically to get rid of that x squared. And I'm just going to link this back to a, a sort of normal question that you might have on completing the square. It's quite a difficult version of completing the square, but you might have something like this. That's 2x squared plus, and let's go with 8x, and something like minus 10 equals zero and obviously you would go about putting all those numbers into the quadratic formula now if we did complete the square on this first things first we have to get rid of the coefficient of x squared so essentially we divide everything by two now when we do this normally we take a two out the bracket and we factorize it by two and that forms x squared plus and we'd have four x there and that would be minus five okay and that would equal zero now if I do the same thing with the quadratic formula, I'll try and do it step by step, although the quadratic formula version is a little bit more complicated. If I take the factor of a out, okay, which I'm not going to put outside the bracket, I'm just going to divide it all by a. So let's have a look what happens if I do that exact same step. We get x squared plus bx divided by a, would just be bx over a. There we go. And then we'd have plus, and that'd be c over a. And that will equal zero. Now, just so I've got the space here, I'm going to get rid of that quadratic formula. Okay, but hopefully you obviously recognise it now. That's what we're aiming for at the end. So that's what we have at the moment. Okay, if I actually just go about completing the square, there we go. That's what it looks like. So the next step, obviously, when we're completing the square, down back to my normal one, uh, is we just complete the square for what's inside the bracket here. Now, for the purpose of this, I'm actually going to be ignoring that too, but I'll talk about what we would do for sort of further down the line. So let's have a look. So now what we do is we complete the square for what's in here. So completing the square, obviously, hopefully you're all keyed upon completing the square, but we get rid of the x squared. It just becomes x. We halve the coefficient of x here, and that's plus 2. We don't put the x with it. We get rid of that, and we put that in a squared bracket, because that squared bracket there expands, and it gives us the x squared. It gives us the 4x, but it creates plus 4 at the end, and we have to subtract that 4 away just to make sure that it matches what's above. So we take away the 4. There we go. Uh, obviously, that's the, the 2 squared there. We can we obviously square that and take it away. And then we've got the minus 5, and that all equals 0. There we go. So that is completing the square and what we do there. Now, if we apply that again over to the right here, and we do the same with uh, these pieces within the quad, well, within our equ equation here with the x's and the a's and the b's and the c's, uh, if we complete the square, um, again, I'm just going to ignore uh, the bit at the end there, uh, but I'm going to complete the square for this bit here. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about that number at the end, I'm just going to complete the square for the bit in there. So what I would have is, I would again halve the, uh, the coefficient of x here, but we have x plus, and then half of b over a is b over 2a. Okay, there we go, b over 2a, and obviously the x has gone there, we take the x out again, so it's x plus b over 2a, and we put that in a bracket, 
and we square it, there we go. Now we need to take away, like we did on the previous one, okay, I'm just gonna highlight this, what did we do? We took away the two squared and that was minus four there. So in this circumstance, I've gotta do this squared and take it away. So I'm just gonna write that, I'm just gonna write take away b over two a and that's all squared. Okay, and then we've got this plus c over a at the end there. There we go, so that plus c over a, and that equals zero, just like we had our minus five left at the end as well. Right, okay, so uh, we're kind of getting there. It's still a bit of a mess. There's a lot going on here. Uh, so let's think about what our next step would be. Now, in terms of what we've got over here uh, with, our quad with our quadratic that we're actually completing the square on, uh, if we were solving it, if we were doing this, obviously this two is still gonna be there. Okay, so for the next step, we need to think about making x as the subject. So on the left here, now one thing that's a little bit different about my numerical one is that I would treat it slightly different because I've got this two on the outside. So for the purpose of this, I'm gonna ignore the two and just have a think about how we would treat it if that wasn't there, just for the purpose of this one because we've obviously not got the a on the outside because of the nature of our expressions. So what I would do at this point is I would add the four and add the five over to the other side. Obviously we wanna make x as a subject. And if I go about doing that, I would have x plus two squared equals, and I'm not going to join it together, I'm just going to write 4 plus, that's not a 4, right, here we go, 4 plus 5, okay, I was just adding them over in the opposite direction, there we go, so 4 plus 5. Okay, so if I do that same thing over here, I need to get these pieces over to the other side. So if we add them to the other side, let's see what we get. We get x plus b over 2a squared equals and we have b over 2a squared that's not a very good b let's write that again b over 2a squared there we go minus c over a okay adding over the b over 2a squared and then taking away the c over a now back over to the left uh, the next step we would want to get uh, in order to get x as a subject is one we'd want to square root both sides okay so if we square root both both sides it gets rid of that bracket squared and if we do that we'd have x plus 2 equals and then we'd have the square root of four plus five, which is obviously nine, but there we go, we get the square root of four plus five. Now don't forget when you introduce a square root, there's a positive and a negative value, so we put plus and minus in front of it here. So we have x plus two equals plus and minus the square root of four plus five. Now if we do that on the right-hand side to our uh, quadratic formula that we're trying to create here, uh, it's not very nice because we've got a, a lot of pieces here that we need to square root. So before we square root it, let's simplify this all down and try and tidy it up a little bit. So I'm gonna expand that bracket there. That's what I'm gonna to do to start with. I'm gonna expand this and see what we get. So over here, uh, we get x plus, I'm gonna to have to write this out a few times, b over 2a squared equals, and if I square the top there, we get b squared. And if I square the bottom, 2a times 2a is 4a squared. Okay, and that is obviously take away c over a. Now again, before I square root it, what I wanna do is I wanna tidy this up again. So I'm gonna create a common denominator with these two algebraic fractions over here. So if I could get a common denominator of 4a squared, I wanna times the top and bottom here by 4a. And if I times them both by 4a, I get 4ac. So that'd be 4ac on the top there, and on the bottom, that would be 4a squared. And that's now gonna allow me to join these up together. So if I write this out and join them up, what have we got? We've got x plus b over 2a squared is equal to, and now we have b squared minus the 4ac on the top, all over, and we've got 4a squared on the bottom. There we go. Right, so the next step is actually to go about square rooting both sides like we have on the left there. So before I do that, I'm just gonna get rid of all this working out so that we can move this up and just focus on where we're at at the moment. So I'm just gonna start getting rid of these pieces. Let's have a look and see what we've got. Okay, there we go. Almost there, there we go. Right, okay, so let's move this up and have a look. So, uh, square root in both sides, we get x plus b over 2a over here. Okay, so that square, the square bracket is now gone. And we're gonna square root this right-hand side. Now again, oh, rather than writing the square root over the whole thing, I'm just gonna square root the top and square root the bottom. So on the top there, we get the square root of what's on the top, b squared minus 4ac. And on the bottom, I am gonna square root the 4a squared. Now if you remember the square root of 4a squared is the opposite of what we'd already done really. It's 2a times 2a, so there we go, 
2a times 2a is my square root, so on the bottom I'm just going to put 2a. And again, don't forget, just like I've done on the left there, that's going to be plus and minus. Now rather than putting it on the outside of the fraction, I'm just going to stick it on the top, okay? You could put it on the outside, but I'll put it on the top there just to keep it looking a bit tidier. So we've got plus and minus, the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. Now the last little thing that we need to do, uh, just to get it as obviously x as the subject, looking at the left there, we need to minus 2 from both sides. So if I minus that 2, I get x equals minus 2 plus and minus the square root of 4 plus 5. There we go. So that would be finishing that off. That's got x as the subject there on the left with my, our numerical one. Now if I do the same on this one, I need to minus this b over 2a to the other side. So if we do that, we'll minus the b over 2a. So x equals, we get minus b over 2a plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. There we go. And obviously both these fractions here have a common denominator of 2a. So we can join them up and just make it one big fraction. And if we do that, let's see what we get. We get x equals, on the top there we've got minus b, plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over the 2a now when we join it up as a single fraction and there we go hopefully you recognize that as the quadratic formula and there we go there it is we've managed to prove it okay so there we go as you've seen obviously that is pretty tough it's not you know it's not easy in, in any way shape or form but in terms of the process we actually used what actual processes did we use okay we completed the square um, we squared a um, algebraic fraction which was fine just squaring the top and bottom we then joined up two fractions so we took two fractions uh, algebraic fractions away from each other so it's subtracting algebraic fractions um, we joined it up um, we square rooted both sides okay there's nothing sort of out of the depth of GCSE level although obviously as I said at the start you would not be expected to actually prove the quadratic formula but there we go I just thought we'd have a go at that for a bit of fun just to show you how it's created just so really it's not just a pointless formula that you're using just because you've been told it works and maybe you haven't been told why it works or how it works but there you go there's a little bit of an explanation for you hopefully you enjoyed that hopefully you found it useful if you did please like please comment please subscribe and I'll see you for the next one Thank you.